What is going on guys? Welcome to another video with your host as always, KMag Time. Now today we're going to be discussing some more Easter eggs and missed jokes and references coming out of Venture Bros Season 7, specifically from Episode 5 and 6. Now before we get into today's video, I do want to announce the winner of the giveaway we did in the last previous Easter egg video or two. We were getting to that at the end of today's video, so make sure you guys are sticking around to the end to find out who is the winner of that giveaway. But let's jump right into today's Easter eggs and randomness jokes. Starting off here, at the beginning of episode 5, there's this dead cow in the in the road it's made out of plastic. And they give us a whole narrative about how there's a, a fallout and it's all a fake story. This could be a reference to the cows and how the government kills them in the Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, where the government actually goes out and kills livestock um, around where an area where a spaceship is supposed to be landing. A pretty cool reference there. Next up, Shoreleaf mentions putting his hand up his ass and making him smile like Jim Henson. Wow. You're shoving your hand up my ass and telling me you're Jim Henson. We want two ages. This is actually really funny. Shoreleaf's got some of the sickest burns in this. But Jim Henson's actually the famous creator of The Muppets. So this is a Muppet-based joke here. He's got a, like a puppet. He's going to work him like a puppet up his ass. Really funny joke there you may have missed. Another thing that Shoreleaf said that's awesome is he tells them that he's gonna, his, his face brings all the boys to the yard. This is clearly a reference to, to the 2003 smash hit song Milkshake by Kells. Also, later in the episode when Hank is daydreaming about riding a dragon, it appears that this dragon is based off of the 1977 Disney cartoon, Pete's Dragon. They look very similar, very similar star style and cartoony uh, look to them and green coloring. So, a pretty cool reference there. They like to point out a lot of these older 70s and 60s references, and this could be a pretty good and clear one. Also, shortly, another sick burn he had is when he calls uh, the guy a Hydro, which is actually a mythological multi-headed dragon making it a, just a hilarious burn. He's got two heads, he calls him a Hydra. Fucking love that one. You may not have known what a Hydra is. Moving on to episode six here. The monarch says he always wonder what this weird house is. Now, if you guys aren't familiar, this season is taking place again in New York City, and they're basing a lot of these places off of real life places. So after doing some digging, uh, I come up with this. This is actually based off of a real life a place in a building. It does look weird, does look out of place. Maybe morning, why does it look so much different? It's actually a fake house. It's just like brick, uh, a brick outside, and it's not a real house. It's actually a ventilation system for the underground uh, subway in New York. So it's got like this fake uh, front of it, and it looks different color than the house on the left and the right. And people are always wondering what the hell it is. It's actually a ventilation system for the subway, and it's pretty cool as well. Again, they bring up a celebrity here, Dave Grohl. You may not have known who Dave Grohl is, one of the best rockers of all time. He's actually the lead singer of the Foo Fighters. He's also in the band Nirvana. Uh, awesome, awesome guy, but I love that they bring Dave Grohl in it. They're totally right. Who could ever not love Dave Grohl? Absolutely hilarious. Um, when Mrs. Monarch talks about the milk and honey torture method, uh, it gets pretty dark and pretty funny, and she goes really into detail about it. You know, till the milk spoils. Soon the tub fills with your excrement, then the flies and them maggots. At first it itches a bit, then it starts to burn. Your skin peels away with every scratch you can't stop yourself from making. The blood mixes with the foul milk and excrement, seeping into your open wounds. The smell of your own death causes you to vomit into your already toxic coffin. Then the rats. Oh! But believe it or not, this is actually a real thing. And it was done by Persians around 400 BC to 600 BC. Um, there's actually a couple detailed uh, re 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 stories of it, retelling the stories of it, of a man lasting 17 days before he passed away in this. Um, very dark and creepy backwards kind of torture method, but I love it. I love that she went that dark. It's one of the funnier things in the episode. Uh, next up, we also know that St. Cloud is always full of weird movie props and uh, obscure TV show references. Uh, first off, we see here the helicopter from Blue Thunder, which is a movie from the 80s about that helicopter that is named Blue Thunder. It's actually a TV series as well. We also see the Sigmund and the Sea Monster suit from this is actually from a t kids TV series back in like 1973. I love these hilarious references and shit they put in there. I don't know where they come up with them. Like just all these random old TV shows that everyone seems to have forgotten or don't really remember all that much. Uh, but that's where those those where those come from. Also, that was really funny. A little throwback here they did here. Rusty tells Billy that he could have built a kill bot with his voice, and he says that he actually did that and he named him Gardo. Could have been a kill bot with my voice programmed into it. 
I actually made one of those. His name was Gardo, and he could have just killed you. Gardo. This is a callback to Season 1, Episode 3, Home Security, where we did actually see Gardo, and it was this hilarious robot that Rusty built with, like, a video screen on it, and it's had his voice, and it did try to guard them, but it ended up just making more trouble for them in the long run, like, locking them in. A great episode. Um, we also see them later, uh, St. Cloud and the Monarch and Gary are driving in the Batmobile. I thought that was really funny. Again, they had, he's got all these props and movie things they throw in. I love that. I love, St. Cloud's one of my favorite characters. Um, also when St. Cloud says he's going to bust things up and chew bubblegum is actually a reference to the classic Duke Nukem video game series where he says he's going to have to kick ass and chew bubblegum, but he's all out of gum. Uh, it's just hilarious, seriously hilarious the way they did this. It's like a classic way of making it. Uh, his wimpiness and his lame villain voice and all his lame joke and stuff kind of wrapped up from the one takes up from like Duke Nukem super hardcore badass and then he kind of just completely opposite with with St. Cloud with that uh, hilarious here. I hope you brought rubbers because the storm is coming. It's nasty and not even a little scary. Also one of the better lines in the entire episode I thought was when um, the the character is dressed up like a bee and Billy tells him he looks like the girl from the blind melon video is fucking hilarious when you look that up it's actually from the one of the most popular songs of the 90s it's um the no rain song by blind melon in that music video there's in fact a little girl dressed up like a bumblebee and i thought that was fucking hilarious i actually loved that one also when the monarch mocks the costumes of billy and the albino um he says what did he get them from lidsville he's taking out like it's trash day Swing and a miss! Way to go, Venture! Love the costumes. They look nothing like you rescued them from Lidsville. Oh, he's coming out! Um, I believe it's that clip, um, but Lidsville is actually an early 70s children's program where the characters typically wore large and odd costumes. Again, a perfect pop culture reference and a sick burn. I love when the monarchs and stuff like this. Uh, absolutely hilarious. But anyway, guys, that is just all the Easter eggs and missed jokes that I personally caught. I know there's probably a hundred out there that I didn't get to or I just didn't catch myself. Let me know if you guys caught more references, more things like that in the comments down below. I would love to know what you guys found in this episode. Like I said, I'm sure I missed a ton. I only watched these episodes a couple of times. I didn't have a whole lot of time this week. I've been pretty busy. Um, so usually I go open them a little bit, a few times more. But this is just what I caught over my initial first few viewings. Great episode so far. I've been loving Season 7. Season 7 has been absolutely outstanding. Uh, one of the better seasons on an Adult Swim. Uh, recent memory, other than like Rick and Morty and a couple other shows. Um, this ranks right up there with me in terms of what I like to watch on Adult Swim. But anyway guys, let's get into that giveaway winner. Uh, like I said, on previous videos, all you guys have to do is like, comment, and subscribe to be entered into that giveaway. And the comment that I picked out of this at random was the account Better Than Bush. So go ahead and send me, if you're watching now, I'm going to reach out to you on, on here. I'll reach out to you on anywhere else I can find you. Um, and so if you guys are seeing this, please send me your interesting information, and I will get that book out to you as soon as possible. Thanks to everyone who liked, commented, and subscribed for your chance to be entered in that. And we will be doing more giveaways in the future. Um, looking out for next week probably gonna do another, another giveaway but uh, thank you guys so so much for watching today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed it. if you guys did make sure to smash that like button subscribe for more content like this in your sub boxes daily hit that little bell button because become best friends and until next time guys remember that it is always kmac time somewhere until then take it easy and peace out go team venture